So about to get underway here at HBF Arena. The whistle goes and it will be the June Lup brothers kicking deep to get this match underway. And it's been picked up straight away by Brandon Olo, one of the veterans of this team. He's in his 90s in the matches for Perth Bays. What a not far away from the 100 this year. The first break of the match had comes very early. And it's powder. And he takes play deep inside Jude Lup territory. This is Newsom Smith. And takes the tackle. It's five in from touch. Newsom Smith. Really there in support, and McDonough to Mead, using the backs and the forwards. Buse now into contact. They push it wide. Mead again. It's a spittle. Still going. Good leg drive. It's about 25 or so metres away. It's been a great start by Bayswater. It's controlling. McDonough gets it. Goes the short side. Little short one to Spittle. Get involved early. McDonough again. Bust. And a penalty coming. So Tessa, good start by Beatty, but the first penalty to the brothers. Yeah, a great, great couple of runs early just to burst themselves out of their own half. And that man we spoke about, Nuku Powder, their captain, just keeping the ball in two hands as well, just as he carried. Made the defence just sit off him and just broke it right open. So the reigning PG Hampshire medal winner, Nuku Powder, the number eight for Bayswater. And probably one of the reasons why he's picked up a contract overseas. So. Yeah. Yes, which is great. Part of the world game as it is now. And good to see an opportunity, another opportunity for a player from Perth to, to head overseas, as much as we'd love to have him hanging around. So the first line out of the day. Olo does the dummy jump. They throw up Bradner. He wins it well. Billy flies through. Might a little bit, a little bit early. <laughs> just Either a, that or he's very just quick. A back as he's receiving the ball right in front of him. Yeah, just a. Geez, that took a while to get that ball in that line out, Tess. Is that just pressure or are they just going through the movements? No, I think it was just through the movements, and it's one of those tricky ones where you want to, you want to really win that early ball, but how much do you want to show and? If you're running too many movements, especially on a wet and slippery day, it can create havoc off Sheldon Tawara. And Perth Bayswater, and we're pretty much back to where we started. But yes, an uh, error there from Tarawa. That was a good opportunity for them. But they've still got the line out. And he was potentially uh, probably playing for a little bit of that breeze. You can see the... Uh, the, the oh, geez, that was, uh, was well kept in there. Yeah, and he just... You can see the breeze on the flags there, so he's probably playing for that. They go to the back, and it's been well won there by Rabaro. Only just got his fingers on it. That's all he needs to do. So the brothers with their first attack of the opportunity, and it's probably not the way they wanted it to go. That ball, I think, just a little bit too far in front. It was well won by Rabaro. Beautifully defended, though, this more there. Look at how the Basie boys, they're just piling in, and then that awareness as well, when that ball gets released to get out, the back line, they're doing their job, putting the pressure on that Joondal up back line. And that's, that sends a genuine message to the Joondal forwards, doesn't it? They're like, you know, defensively Basie have got their uh, their mall set and ready to go. So does that steer them away from drawing? So Oscar White starting for Brothers with Ryan McGloin doing an exam, so it's popped out in favour of Brothers. First big run there. To Duff. Sun shining here at HBF Arena. Nice short ball there to Skillen. So Junlup on the attack. Tarawa. Quick hands, we'll call it. Grinley now with it. It's been lost forward. And Bayswater on the counter-attack. There's some space on this side. The bounce is going to be good for Brothers. Nice chase, though, from Hardwick. Brothers get back cleanly. Tarawa. Ugly kick. It's been picked up eventually there. 
Kelly Teo. So both sides struggling to find some rhythm in the early stages of this match. Bayswater, this is Hardwick offloading. Binion it is. Wrapped up just shy of the halfway line. And penalty in favour, Bayswater. Oh, geez, that's a hard score. <laughs> I thought, well, I thought uh, Patrick Tuerli had done very well to get on ball. And he walked back slowly, shaking his head. He thought he'd done well to get back on ball, too. Bayswater early on, though, they're looking pretty threatening when they get the ball in hand. They look like they've been able to just about do something with it. <coughs> Every touch they've had so far, it's, it's looking ominous for them. They can keep the ball, and no matter what ball they can get. They're going to create something with it from the look of things. So abused. Newsom Smith brings it down. Annan wraps it up. They start to drive. They're over the 40. They're looking for the 22. It started to splint up. Ball secured. McDonough. This is Powder. Mead goes himself. Runs back into some traffic. McDonough. Mavili. Straightens the attack. Goss is there in support for Bayswater. Junlup defending well. This is Olo. Takes the tackle of Tarawa. They go again. Goss. Tries to find some space. They wrap him up centre field. Meads there to clean out. It may have been turned over. In fact, it has been. And to pledge thumps that, but he may have put a bit too much on it. In fact, he was just outside the 22, so they'll come back. So some sustained attack, but sustained defence here at HBF Arena. Yeah, probably too, too lateral there, I think, from Goss. He's trying to look for space there, but he actually ran out of support, and that's how June Lutman were able to turn that over as Basie. I don't think anyone was ready for that one. I'm not sure if there's a time on line outs, but <laughs> I think that looked like that had expired. We'll just throw it in. A bit old school. No one. No lifting. Up for that one. Basie, get the scrum. I'm <laughs> sorry. How Basie ended up with scrum there? That's what was a knock on <laughs> off Jutila because they were too busy giggling at the line outside. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Patrick Tuolei, Jutila up number eight. He was having a good old laugh. <laughs> so McDonough with a scrum feed. Big early drive from Bayswater. They keep it in. They get the advantage. Powder has it at the back. Now they come through Mead. It misses Goss. In fact, it misses Hardwick. I'll come back for the penalty. And Benjamin Buis, the whole front row there from Basie. They they got caught out in that very first scrum. Jundalup, they got right underneath Buist in the middle. This time there was no chance that they were letting that happen. They hit early, got that feed in quickly and just used that momentum straight through. It's going to earn them another crack at this Jundalup pack in the corner. So Mead... Send their ball up and over the roof. You'd have to say the Basie Pack are doing their job early on, aren't they? They, As you said, Tess, except for that first scrum, they've actually set a good platform. So abused. And they get it right this time. Now to Powder. They start to drive. They've splinted. No, they've been... No, they've got the penalty. So not coming in straight was the ruling against Tom Bradner, I think it was. So they'll go for the line out again. Great opportunity here for Bayswater. Junlup need to be careful. They probably haven't had a warning, haven't had enough for a warning, but Cynical ones. It's been left behind by Olo. Picked up by Joodlup. Grimly it was to pounce on it. Oh, and they've just let them off the hook completely and utterly there, haven't they? 
they went simple the line out before and this time as we're looking here at the footage of the of the penalty which led to it but they just went away they just missed that line out little knock on but keeps the pressure on them through their scrum they can keep that scrum where it was from that last that last scrum it's going to be a whole lot of hard work for Jundalup to get out of their end here So, big scrum. Those will be keen to try and get a tight head on this one. It's, it's, the, it's the close, tight line that they just need to walk here. They'll be, they'll be right on the edge. They'll be really keen. They know there's a little bit of blood in the water, but they'll be able to really attack them. And, and the opportunity that can come from them attacking this Jundala pack here but they've also got to keep it controlled enough that they don't give anything away and don't let them out of their end easily. Big drive coming. Jundal up holds it well. It goes back to Tarawa. And kicking into that breeze. Tess looks as though it's got a little bit stronger. He's not getting a whole lot off his kicks. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's picked up and it's favouring that Bayswater pack in this first half as well. It's it's coming down. It's blowing almost directly into the corner that they're playing in across the field. And like we, like you just said there, Mick, it's, it's tough for Sheldon Tarawa to get that ball away, especially on the far side of the pitch. So Bayswater again. Can they get it right this time? Olo. Second bite. Gets it. They bring it down. And I think it was. They cleaned it up. Here they go. This is Vili. Referee playing advantage. Great chance here for Perth, Perth Bayswater. McDonough to Mead. Little chip through for himself. Interesting option. Oh, we were about, I think we were all about to ask the question. He must have been the only person that knew. When the ref, when the ref gave advantage there, I think Mead was the only guy that he told because <laughs> Mead's the only person that thought to chip that ball then. It's, it's, it is an interesting question because, uh, you know, there's arguments for, for getting penalty advantage and just continuing to play as you normally would or trying something special and having a bit of X factor. So different coaches will ask for different things from their players and uh, Mead obviously thought he could show some X factor there and go himself. Just needed a bit more height. Well won there by Powter. Bayswater, this is probably their best setup. up Junlup holding firm. They're a bit tall, though. Now the drive starts to come from Bayswater. They're piling in. They must be close. All oh, held up. Great defence there, Bright Brothers. It's good work by June Lubb. You see during the replay, they were a little bit tall, but then once Bayswater got momentum somehow, I'm not sure who's actually got the pill at this stage. It's in there somewhere. I think they needed to transfer that to the back, but it got, it got caught up. It was it? I think it might have been Sean Skillen over the far side, just kind of weasel his way through that front lifter, get his arms around the ball. It's a huge effort for that Jundalup pack. So Tarawa sends it back, picked up by Tio to Olo, winds up. Oh, good tackle. Jumping into that, Bradner it was. No foul play was the call, as you could hear. This is Goss. Wrapped up there by Kingy. Villy. Adding to his stats in terms of metres this afternoon, Mead tries to dance his way through. Ball comes loose. Another penalty in favour of the visitors this afternoon. Junalup keeping Perth Bayswater well in this match. Well, it's just discipline, isn't it, from Junalup? They've got, they've got to work this out because they're giving away way too many penalties and letting, letting Bayswater just pump it down into the corner and put them, on, put them under pressure. So a bit of, a bit of discipline from Junalup might help here. As Hardwick just drops that into the corner. So we are, those people sitting in front of that line out have got good seats this afternoon, getting get, plenty get of action. Getting their money's worth, aren't they, Mick? <laughs> right in front of them. It's all happening down there. Back line ready to go. Kalolo, they've got him just outside Goss. They need to win it first. Powder does just that. Bayswater. This is Kalolo. They saw him there. He's still going. The big number seven. Heads towards the line. Dragged down a few metres short. Picked up by Annan. Bayswater on the attack. And they get there. 
And I was going to say Kalolo, I dare you say that's his job to actually get some metres in the middle of the field or potentially in broken play on the edge. And he's done a very good job there, just busting tackles. And uh, Joseph Annan gets the benefit from it. So, yeah, we saw that. He was just hovering outside in between Goss and Spittle. And as we see it here, it was well that one there by Nuku. And Goss just links with Kalolo. He had a lot of work to do. He was pretty flat-footed when he got the ball. But great leg drive. And then Annan there to clean up and get himself across the try line. So the first try of the match here at HBF Arena comes to Perth Bayswater. They've been camped down that end for the majority of this first half. So nice for them to come away with some points. And uh, Patrick Tuiali, he'd be disappointed in his defence there. Like you're expecting back rowers to be able to be quite effective in their dominant tackles. And he just got shrugged off so easily by Kalolo. As Mead adds the extras. So Perth Bayswater out to a 7-0 lead here at... HBF Arena, the home of the Joondalup brothers. As we just see it again here on the replay, Kalilo flat-footed when he gets it, but yeah, brushes off a couple of easy tackles. Tui Lee is certainly one of three or four. So Tarawa getting play underway once more. Hardwick takes it inside his 22, unleashes. And Connor Allen just lets that one go into touch. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect little exit there from Jundal up and Sheldon Tarawa. Learning from his last kickoff, not kicking it anywhere near Brandon Olo or, or yeah. Nuku Powder as well, <laughs> not giving them any opportunity to run the ball out of their end. So Grimley with the line out throw. It's well won by Rabaro. Tarawa. This is Tomoko. Big number six. Rabaro again, getting through some work. They continue to come, commentary side. Nice skills from the forward. Skillen, Skillen still going. Nuku comes across in cover. Now they go open. This is Tuya Li'i. Rabaro driving through. Trying to get some front football. Slow to come. De Pledge wants it. Now it comes to Tarawa. The short ball. Tomoko offloading. They continue to go. This is White. White still going. Referee playing penalty advantage. Tarawa, long ball at two. Tomoko slammed into the turf. And they'll come back for the penalty. Thank you. Offside, three black. This here. Got to get back, right back. So you, you sort of look at that and you go, you know, did he need to do that chip? Could they have continued to play, build pressure? It's almost like you, you're saying, oh, we've had enough of the advantage, we'll just kick it away and then come back to the penalty. So. Yeah, it was just a phase too late, wasn't it? We had, you had Sean Skillen sitting there on the wing, he was screaming for it. There was that little bit of space. It was just a phase or two before and then Nathan Harwick was able to cover it and that by the time... Tarawa got that chip across. Yeah, hardly could see it. He shut that space down. But they were looking good, Jundalup. Jundalup up until then. Good little interplay down this short side with their with their forwards all seeing a little bit of space, running around the corner, just stretching, stretching that Bayswater team, like we touched on in that pre-game. So Tarawa looking to register the first points for Jundalup. And he does exactly that. So seven points to three. The score here midway through the first term of this round 12 Fortescue Premiership match between Junlup and Perth Bayswater. And I think, I think that's uh, only the second uh, foray into the Bayzy half for Junlup. And to be able to come away with three points, that'll give them a little bit of confidence. Today, each time they can get points, they need to take them. They just keep that scoreboard ticking over. Builds be, pressure in itself, doesn't it? They'd be pretty happy considering the amount of ball they haven't had. And Tarawa getting onto that one. 
So a better exit for Joondalup. Perth Bayswater, though, still camped inside Joondalup territory. And it will be Bust with the line-out throw. They've got plenty of options, Perth Bayswater. It bobbles around, but they play on. Mead to Goss. He's got options inside and out. Goes himself. Tio is with him. Goss still running. McDonough. This is Billy. Offloads to Olo. Mobile, strong second rower. Been very good for Perth Bayswater for a long time. Mead again. Powder. Offloading. Tio bounces off. Telly Tio. Newsom Smith. Brushes off one. Centre field now. Bayswater. Front football. They've got the advantage as well. This is Spittle. Takes play up towards the 22. McDonough. Nuku. Olo. Annan. Billy, Goss, so Bayswater looking a little bit lost at the moment. Referee almost blowing that up, but he lets it play on. Villy. Brothers trying to rip that ball. They go the short side, Mead. Stepping off that left foot, they wrap him up. Five metres away. Bayswater continue to attack. Powder. Nuku Powder close. Olo. Goss. This is Hardwick. Brushes off Duff. Hardwick still going. Newsom Smith now straightens. Not sure if the ref's still playing advantage or it's over. So there must have been uh, must have been uh, an advantage there. So uh, Junal up, I can breathe easy for a few seconds. Strange, the you know, advantage it always confuses me because they only probably made ten metres in the terms of advantage, but sometimes it goes on for forty. And that time it they made maybe fifteen and it, it had passed. So I'm sure the referee is communicating with the team all the time. And I dare say this chat. Uh, with Joondalup is around the number of high tackles because they've given away some penalties and they've been for high tackles. So I think uh, they might have got a warning there. Yeah, they, don't, they certainly don't need to be... I mean, they'd be frustrated they're having a bunch of ball, but they shouldn't be frustrated with the way they're defending. It's, uh, it's been very good as we're just looking at some replays here. Goss just offloading to Harwick. He went on a bit of a scamper. But uh, from the ensuing phase, I don't think... He knew some Smith it was. I think they held him up. They do get around that ball very well, June up. They've done it a few times to Bayswater. So another scrum. Right on June Lup's line. And straight away. So Tess, that's Bayswater. A little bit over enthusiastic. Yeah, just a touch, but they've just. It, it's almost a natural thing, though. They've just won the hit there, and they've won it so well that to stay in a strong position, they've just chased their feet. Just those two steps we can just see on the replay. But unfortunately, the ball's not in, so the referee, he's going to rule that they've taken too much space and they've taken away from them illegally, whereas if they didn't move their feet forward, the scrum would end up going down or they'd end up in a weaker position as well. So it's a, it's a tough call, but it's a fair call as well. So Sheldon Tarawa having to kick to the other side of the field because of that breeze. It must be stronger out there than it seems because he was only about 20 in from touch on this side, but he had to go all the way to the other side. So it didn't really chew off too many metres. So Bayswater continued to spend time in the June Lup half. Olo wins it well. McDonough to Goss to Kalolo. So damaging in those wide channels. Villy. Almost had his hands on it too, Ili'i. 
Unlucky not to get the penalty. Goss, Hardwick. Takes the tackle. Kid now. Mead. This is Nuku powder. So good. Mead again. Spots the gap. Mead offloading to Annan. It's five in from touch. Bayswater stringing the phases together. Olo. Centre field. 20 metres out. Referee playing advantage once again. Spittle. Powder. Vili. Referee still playing advantage at this stage. Mead. Goss. And a mountain of players running into each other's way, though. McDonough. Newsome Smith, so Bayswater flat footed. McDonough, anyone. Tio, still going. It's the try line there, Villy now. He winds up. Centimetres away. Newsome Smith diving for the line. And no again. And this time they come back for the penalty. There's two, two things that are happening here, which is really interesting. Bayswater are playing with plenty of wits and they've got options either side of the ruck. They're getting through plenty of continuity, which is building pressure. But Joondalup are up to the task. They're actually defending really well. It's scramble defence, but they're doing it really well. And this could potentially frustrate Perth Bayswater if they don't score points. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of minutes. Oh, and that's not going to help Journal up at Kingy. all. Wanunga Kingy, it is. And it was probably... Uh, it, it was a matter, it was, of, yeah. Yeah, matter of time if they were going to continue to be ill-disciplined and give away penalties. So that's going to make it tough. Four brothers down a man for almost the rest of the half. 27 and a half gone. He'll be back on for the final two. It's going to be interesting to see how Basie end up playing it for the next 10 minutes as well. Like we, like we said, there's that little bit of pressure that's just starting to heap up on them. You know, they'll be looking up at the scoreboard. They've been camped in this 22 for 20 minutes of the 27 minutes this half has gone for, but for only seven points. So are they going to start getting urgent, urgent and desperate for points now? So big scrum from Bayswater. They march it. Powder has it at the back. They've got the penalty if they need it. Powder. Picks up, offloads to Goss. This is better from Bayswater. And the results come. Finally, after so long in that 22, they finally come away with the points. It was well controlled there by Nuku Powder. Picks it off himself and offloading to Fraser Goss. And it was Oscar White unable to stop the big number 12. And unfortunately for Joondalup, Sheldon Tarawara is not having the best defensive game today. Uh, Perth Bayswater are hitting that midfield quite hard and I dare say that's going to continue for the rest of the game. They would have seen opportunities there. Yeah, well, I think they know how critical he is to this Joondalup team and they've just sent Manuka Lolo down that channel. Just about every line out he's been sitting off, they've looked to play and they've played straight down that channel there. So they're making Tarawa do some work early on, but... It was off the back of that dominant scrum, wasn't it? We've spoken about both of those front rowers for Basie, but it was Chris Kidd this time getting the chocolates and getting right under J.P. Mostert on the tight head side of Joondalup. And if Basie had been able to stay square there on that scrum, they would have gone. That would have been a pushover, wouldn't it? There's no doubt there, They're just in terms of the power that was coming through. Yeah, I think I think they were marching all the way, and I think that's what the that's what that penalty advantage was for 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 Joondalup, just slowly backing out and not keeping it straight. So we see again. Just that good bit of strength there from Fraser Goss as well. Still plenty of work to do. Carried Oscar White over the line. He's been good. He's been very adventurous, uh, Goss. He looks for work. He, he passes well. He's great to have as a second uh, second receiver in this Bayesley uh, back line. Probably eases the, uh, any pressure on uh, Tavish Mead. So he's doing a good job. So Tarawa for brothers. 
The restart again goes down to Telly Teo. Sends it back to Hardwick. And with that little bit of breeze behind him, thumps it down. Allen takes it and offloads to Tuyali'i. Back to Tarawa. Punches to the corner. There was no one home. Binion is back. Picks it up inside his 22 now. Duff is chasing. He offloads. Mead almost through. Wrapped up on the second one there by Tomoko. Annan offloading to Goss. Kalolo still going. Kalolo, he's got Tarawa in front of him. Makes the tackle. Needs some support. Annan leaves it behind. And Kalolo not happy with himself. Oh, well. As play continues. Played on. Played on quick. The ball's loose. Mead has it. A little goose step from the number 10. Wrapped up by Allen. Oh, big clean out there from Powder. Goss. He gets wrapped up by Grimley there. The hooker making a good tackle. Looks like he might have done a hammy, though. Heath Tesman knows all about that. We'll get a report very soon. News from Smith breaks through. Another grass cutter there from Connor Allen, the fullback. McDonough wrapped up. Mead again. Scrambling attack. Spittle to Olo. Olo straightens in some space. The second rower, and he'll go all the way. Wonderful try. Great running there from Brandon Olo. Too big, too strong, too fast on a great angle. It was all set up here by Tashir Newsom smith with that fantastic run. A great tackle by Allen. But once Olo gets that ball in his hands, it was really just make it up as you go along from Perth Bayswater. Spittle started it, and then Brandon Olo, just nice angles. A big man, very hard to stop. I dare say, there's a, there's a few signs here. Just the last few minutes of Bayswater starting to really express themselves, which they'll be enjoying. So their rugby will be, it'll be quite enjoyable with that sort of footy. But for Joondle up, falling off tackles, getting disconnected in the defensive line, they're going to have to really refocus on the defence. Otherwise, this, this could blow out very quickly, I think. So how tough is it going to be for them not having Kingy, Wanunga Kingy, in that back line? Oh, in the midfield. Like, it, and it just sort of depends. Like now, if you've got a really good 12 who's a really good you know, communicator, it, it takes pressure off the, the 10, and then it tends to allow a back line to function really well with Mead. Now, you know, missing somebody like that for 10 minutes and having an attack come at you, uh, you know, like, and these guys look, they're, they're passing in, in the in their, in their offload, sorry, offloading in tackles and... Brendan Ola, he's, he's evasive, isn't he, for oh, a great. tall yep. lock? So, generally, yeah, up. they'll be missing Kingy in the midfield there, you know, the, if, he, if he provides some really good chat and some direction. So, Sheldon Tarawa, once again, this time, coming inside, just mixing, mixing things up a bit. Well taken by Duff. That might be the spark Joondalup needed. They haven't had much ball. This is Bradner now. And they get the penalty. Yeah, Powder it is. Just looking up. He's probably just a tenth of a second too long. He had his hands on the ball. But Joondalup, good enough to get him off it. So you had a stopwatch on that there, Tess, no, did I you? did. I have, I've got my... I am the, the official timekeeper for today. Don't worry about what the referee says. <laughs> and interestingly, the bench calling for Sheldon Tarawa to go for touch. He was... I think looking to get some more points, but the bench have been yelling out, no, go for the line. So looking for seven instead of three, Joondalup brothers. We haven't seen much of them and what they can do because they just haven't had any ball in this half so far. They go to the back. Rabaro takes it. They close in. It's been picked up off the back by Tui Ali'i. Powder makes the tackle. They need some runners. Referee playing advantage. Need to stay composed. The counter ruck there coming from Bayswater, but we'll come back for the penalty. To Ili'i goes to play. I think he's going to the pocket. No, no, he's not. Oh, I thought he was going to. Thought it was a bit premature. Paddy to Paddy to Ili'i was doing this the the tap and then he was, no, I didn't tap. Trick move. <laughs> wasn't he there for a second? I thought he was just about to walk over under the sticks. Well, they've elected the scrum test. 
It's an interesting call, this. This Basie team, they, they know that they'll back themselves here as well. I wouldn't have minded just seeing Jundala go straight at it, take that quick tap, just keep playing, keep the pressure on, keep it a little bit a little bit fast, a little bit frantic, keep running this Basie pack around. But by going to the scrum, still with a, a short, shorter back on the pitch as well, just gives the Basie time to, to reset, reset their defense, reset their focus, get their breath back and get ready to attack. Big scrum for June Love Brothers. They've got a good platform, the drive coming. Referee playing advantage again, Tarawa takes the tackle of Mead. De Pledge throws it, and then picks it up. They'll come back for the penalty. What will they do this time? Skillen has it, and he leaves it behind. Bradner with the headgear. I think Bradness is going to tap and go. In fact, he taps and offloads. So Jude Luck Brothers. The pledge. Bradner. The pledge again. Short ball. And they're over. Oh, it's Andrew Great Picotto. try. Andrew Picotto, the reserve <laughs> hooker. Isn't he pumped up as well? We'll try and pick it up here. I thought it had almost been turned over to, to Pledge, to Bradner. He went close. Then to Pledge got that second bite. And that little step, the shimmy there from Andrew Picotto, <laughs> he is fired up. We didn't even see him come on. What an impact player. Yeah, he, he snuck on as you picked it. Jack Grimley succumbing to that hamstring injury before. And Picotto, such a seamless transition as well. He came on his first line out. They cooled down the back. Nailed that one. Scrum five metres out with this Paisy, Paisy pack hot on the attack. Locked that down and then he works around the corner. Wow, that's an important try for Joondalup as the lights come on here at HBF Arena. And Sheldon Tarawa looking to add the extras so they'll have Wananga Kingi back on almost from the restart. In fact, he's on the touchline waiting to come on. So they've Copped up a couple of tries, but they've clawed one back, which is a great result for a brothers. And Tarawa does raise the flags. Kingy now, he'll take his way back onto the field as we see it once more. With Pakoto just stepping off that right foot. He's a Harry Scoble lookalike. <laughs> Andrew Pakoto. Oh, a little beacon out there. We'll give a little shout out to Harry Scoble running around up, up in the old dart mm. up in Oxford. Clever boy. So Hardwick. Rabaro pulling out of that one. He didn't want a piece of that, did no, he? It almost like he lost sight of it or something. Yeah, I think he, he just, yeah, at the last minute, just sitting on the replay, just, yeah, almost clipped his head, but I don't think he actually touched it in the end. So, important stage of this match. Just a minute and a half remaining in the first half. Junlup's done very well. On the scoreboard, they'll want to not concede another try in this dying minute or so. They've got the scrum feed to pledge. Back to 15 on 15. Yeah, I'd love to see them launch one under Kingy here and just chance their arm for one quick attack. Here goes Kingy. Good leg drive from the centre. To pledge again, looking for some runners. In fact, he finds Tarawa. Just wants to thump that down. Telly Tio underneath it again. The Hardwick punches it back. That's a great kick. No one at home for Brothers Oakley Pierce. It was just a little bit short, up a bit close, and they've just seen the space behind him. Yeah, and that, that that exit pace just backfired on them there, hasn't it? That was it was pre-called. They obviously wanted Kingy to get up to take that first carry, and then they had Tarawa in the pocket. Yeah, and that, sh that should never happen. Olo wins it well. Here they go. Bayswater on the attack. Goss has it. Time almost up on the clock. Powder turning it back inside to Kid. Good solid hit, and the penalty coming. Oh, that's a pocket. He's going to the pocket, is he? Oh, not again. 
I'll try and pick it up here on the oh, replay. No, it's Andrew Picotto. I don't like... There were some calls from the bench. There was a bit of a lift on the leg, but it really didn't look too serious there. Chris Kidd, never in a dangerous position, I would have thought. No, so no. that's right there. They said the leg's above. We'll try and pick it. There's Picotto there. He's just then... He's Nothing ended up... <laughs> he's ended up in a in a big tackle. Ended up on 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 the opposition Rabaro's back as he's trying to get up. That's the. I think he he hinged. So I think his legs were in the air, but he I don't know how high his hips were. But now they've got to search for a hooker. They've already lost Jack Grimley to his hammy, and it was Andrew Picotto there, the the replacement hooker. He's the one that's been given his marching orders to have his time out. So we're not sure who's coming on. We'll try and. And then I think yeah they need then need to drop someone because of this uh, to prevent teams taking advantage of the situation and going to non-contested scrum. So a big challenge here for brothers. You can see Perth Bayswater salivating at the prospect here. They have another try right on half time. The big drive comes. Powder picks it up off the back. Well wrapped up by Skillen. They continue to come. Spittle makes the tackle. Kalolo. June Lup continue to chop the legs of these Bayswater players. Billy has it now. McDonough does the dummy run. News from Smith. Bust. Kingy with the tackle. Only a metre away. Villy, the pick and go from the big front rower. Powder. And he gets there. So Nuku Powder, it was doing the damage in the end. Villy almost got there himself. But just Powder stays low. And scores the try. So heartbreak for Joondalup. But probably their own fault for that exit. Yeah. And one of, one of the things that's really impressive with Bayesley is that they, they are able to play with width because they, they actually give away support lines to allow their ball carriers, because they've got so many of them, space to carry into. And because they're so hard to tackle, they can actually stay strong in tackles, which gives time for the, their uh, lateral support players to actually get to them in support. So, Bayesley, uh, they're going to be a tough team to play in that regard because they've got so many threats that have space. So, some... Tavish Mead looking to add the extras. 26-10 is the score at the moment. Joondle up with another player in the bin, so they'll start a man down for this second half. So that'll be a total of 20 minutes where they've been down to one, one player less. And Tavish Mead makes no mistake. So half time here at HBF Arena, and it is Perth Bayswater 28, leading Joondle up Brothers 10. And uh, Dwayne, very hard as Heath Tessman heads out to try and pick someone up, but... Um, I think we might try and get Sheldon Tarawa. We'll see how good he is. In fact, he does. We'll go straight to straight to Heath Tessman, who is there with Sheldon Tarawa. Thanks very much. I'm here with Sheldon Tarawa and Sheldon. It's been a valiant first half. A lot of defence. Can we get the points back in the second half? Yeah, definitely. And we're not worried. Um, we know we've had we've been playing against the wind. We were down a player for 10 minutes. So defence. I'm proud of the efforts. We stayed on our line. Defended hard, so now we've got the win. We're going to use field possession and hold on to the ball. We haven't touched it much, so when we have touched it, we've built phases, got points on the board, so that's the plan. All right, I'll let you get back to the to the group. You can relay that message on. Cheers, Tess. Good to see you. Thanks, Tess, and thanks to Sheldon Tarawa. We do, do appreciate the players giving us time at half time. I know it's important for them to get back to the huddle, but 28 points to 10 is the score here at HBF Arena. Perth Bayswater leading Joodle up. We'll take a very short break and be back with all the action of the second half after this. Do you love the game? Do you want the best seat in the house? Help make the game better. 
get involved. Become a referee. Welcome back to HBF Arena, the, where the home side has a little bit of work to do, trailing by 28 points to 10 against Perth Basewater and Dwayne Beatty in the lead. But would they be happy with that lead? Oh, we're sort of talking at a half time. You know, like they're 28 points, 10 up, and you'd sort of go, yeah, we're happy with that. But I think the amount of ball they had, they'd be, they would have wanted more. So it would be interesting to see the attitude in the second half. So the second half is underway. Nathan Hardwick... Gets proceedings underway and we'll try and pick up if there has been any replacements. I think that might have been, is that? 
Natai. In fact, it is. So Cameron Natai, he is on in jersey 23. So we'll try and pick up who he has come on for. It's Sheldon Tarawa from that penalty. Puts play still in their own half, but just up towards the halfway mark. The ball's just gone. The donut straight through the hands of Bradner. Oh, and Bradner, he's got to make it easier there. They've still got they've still got a hooker in the sim bin, so they've still still got the replacement on the field. And unfortunately, he puts the ball puts the ball there just for his own player to catch it. But like he said, comes up with the donut. Bradner, you'll have to make up for this now. Making advantage of this seven-man brothers pack, Tarawa, Kingy, Kingy. This is the danger player. Oh, slips. Nice run from him though. The skillin. It's a good start to the second half by Joondla. Plenty of enthusiasm. Kingy again. So dangerous. They need to get him more ball. Here they go again through Skillen. Offloading to Tuyali'i. Tarawa. White. Offloading to Allen. Up from fullback. Wrapped up by Vili. All players on deck. Natai to White. Steps inside Bust. Steps inside Vili. Wrapped up. Finally there by Hardwick. Natai again. Penalty coming. Natai taps and goes quickly. Has he scampered far enough? He's about a centimetre short. Skillen picks and goes. Ball still there. Bradner. They fold him back. They pick and go and get the points. We'll try and pick up who it was. Anyone's guess. I think it might be Mostert. JP Mostert. He doesn't mind a try. So Bradner got folded back there and Mostert was tucked in. Ball found it at his feet. And that's a great start by Junlap Brothers. And JP Mostert's done very, very well there. He's, he's picked the ball up at his kill, kept really good shape, really strong shape, and just used his thighs and his lower limbs to drive him forward. So Sheldon Tarawa. And they just really, the energy they have brought to the start of this half. And Kingy damaging each time he's had that ball in his hands. He's a real, he asks questions the defence, doesn't he? He's, you're, you're, you're going to have to be switched on if you're a Perth Bayswater defender coming up against Kingy. As Tarawa lines this conversion attempt up. That's the 22 metre line you can see on screen. He's about 10 or so in from touch. And he caresses that ball. Going to the left. Unfortunately for Joondla because just has an extra couple of points. Make it look that little bit healthier but you see JP Mostert. See that just that power through his legs as he drives forward. So Bayswater are oh, making a change as well. Akil Atta in Jersey 23 has just made his way on. Kingy gets the ball from the restart. Dances his way. Goss finally gets hold of him. But Wenunga Kingy is proving to be a real handful here this afternoon. Natai goes high. This is Atta. He's got some toe. Vili. Atta's just come across from the UK as Vili continues to run. McIsaac 
Tries to make the tackle. He's from Smith. Straight and scramble to the ground there by Bradner. Mead. Oh, they come back. Must have been a little knock on. Yeah, McDonough there just trying to rush and get that ball out quickly. Just a little bit of a fumble. And that was the aftermath of it. And Heath Tesman uh, during that half time break it was good for you to be caught up on the sidelines just with um, Rashan Pasatoa. So good to see him. A good Perth Bayswater boy. How's his recovery? Yeah, his recovery is going really well, and he, it's it's awesome to see him down here supporting his club as well. He said he's just been doing some testing over in Sydney on the knee, and he's probably about four weeks away from getting back out on the pitch. He's been down with Basie as well, spending a bit of time with them, both coaching and training, helping them out, and he's looking forward to getting back out there and hopefully helping them come finals time. And a great player to have floating around the club too and it's a big scrum from Bayswater but Joondalup getting the penalty you can explain that one Heath Tesman that's straight out of your school book <laughs> well it's one of those calls that isn't called too often but you can just see the angles of all those front rowers there for Bayswater they're just all driving up Joondalup doing the right thing they're trying to stay down they're trying to stay low whether or not they're they're winning that shove or not but if you're not pushing straight through the mark, then you're going to get in trouble, whether that's laterally or going straight up and down. And, and Basie, they've obviously spotted that there's a weakness there for them to... They can get underneath this jundle up front row. Their scrum coach, Kieran Longbottom, he's obviously spotted something and he's just trying to tweak them at halftime, work on their height, and unfortunately just gets called for it then. So McIsaac with the throw. Natai to Tawara. This is White. Natai again to Ili'i. Brushes off Goss, gets him on the second go. Bradner into clean out. Natai again, Tawara. Kingy offloading. This is Allen. Allen! Great leg speed, takes play up inside the 22. Natai again, Tarawa. This is Rabaro. It's been stolen, though, by Kololo. The counter-attack opportunity here. Annan for Perth Bayswater. Wrapped up in a tackle that needed to be made. Goss. Atta. Little chip. White holds his ground. And Akil Atta. So... Okay, here we go. We've got some changes coming. Let's just see this on the replay here. Tui Lee getting run around there by Annan and Akil Attar. You can see him here. I think he might have tried to go over the top, but we've grubbed it through. And Oscar White just holding his ground, but a replacement. So it looks like we've got Andrew P Picotto is back on after his 10 minute sin bin. Yeah, and that gives Duncan McIsaac another little break. And as well, Dylan Natai coming out there for JP Mostert, the try scorer. He's getting an early break, and he looks like a pretty handy slab of meat, Dylan Natai, that they're wheeling out there now. Looks like a strong young lad. And again, this is where, you know, we, we talk about the... They used to be the reserves, now they're the finishers. <laughs> and it's the depth of both these benches. And whether that's a weakness of, of Perth Bayswater, does June Lub have a better bench? It's, it's uh, the, the second half of this match is going to be an enthralling one with the score 28 15. And Bayswater have had so much ball and so much possession, but June Lub still right in this match. Yeah, definitely. Time will tell in terms of these benches because they're, they're certainly going to get used. And, uh, and it, it, can, it can play a part. You, you, you're replacing half of your team by the end of the match. So, and if you use your bench early and they can make a big impact. That can have a, a, a huge impact on the score. So we we'll just see what happens here. I've just, I've just been tracking the, the both nines for these teams now since Cameron Nato has been uh, brought on the field for June Lap. And I'd, I'd love to see them run some positive running lines. They, they, they're slowing the ball down for each team by tracking behind the play and having to then check, catch up to the breakdown. So keep an eye on that. So they finally goes to Rabaro, Tawara, Natai. Fresh legs. Takes a mountain. Oh, they've stripped him. Mead does extremely well. Mead, can he do it on his own? They finally bring him to ground. So a real let off 
as Powter takes play up to the 22. And this time Bayswater get the penalty. But a loose carry there from Dylan Nartai. Looks very good with ball in hand, but unfortunately for him, Mead able to just strip him and turn defence into attack. Vili dumbing to have a kick. Judela backing themselves here as well. Not taking the same route, not wanting to just keep piling some of those points on, keep eking that pressure on top. The brothers really backing their ability to score points and, and going straight to the corner here. Wasn't even a second thought. So Bust with the throw. Olo wins it. Yeah, it's a bit not straight. I think he just got caught out a little bit there. Ben Bust. It was uh, just off that walk-in throw as Brandon Olo, as he hit the line, they looked to go quickly. They're all set up. It looked like they're going to more that Joseph Anna in there at halfback, ready to set it up, but the accuracy just wasn't there. And Jundalup given another reprieve. Big scrum, Bayswater driving. Picked up. Tuyali'i, and he's been good for brothers this afternoon. Gets them out of trouble. Natai back to Tawara. And Tarawa this time talked about using the breeze in his half-time chat with Heath Tessman. Probably didn't chew up as much as he would have liked. Still in a danger zone for Junlup brothers. And one of the other things he mentioned in that quick chat as well was that they weren't worried. They, you know, they were behind on the board, but they weren't worried at all. They've shown that how they've come out this second half. Olo wins it. Goss leaves it behind. It's going to be picked up. The counter-attack opportunity here. This is White. Keeps the legs driving. Mead tries to strip it again. It's been left behind by two elite. Only just the little ones. Unfortunately, they still count. As we see the counter-attack here... Goss just left it behind. White swooped on it. And Mead loves to get his arms around that ball. A real pest for a number 10. And then Tui Elite just here. Just a little tiny, tiniest of knock-ons. It's almost like the ball, the player on the ground wants to secure it and make sure it's secure, but the player is above him is wanting to pick it up as quick as they can and sometimes it can just put them off and that's what's happened there. It looks like a little bit of rain might be starting to fall here at HBF Arena up at Journal Up. Another big scrum from Bayswater. Powder, they're trying to get the penalty. Then they get it. McDonough, Mead, Hardwick. King makes the tackle. Had I wanted it, but didn't get it. Newsom Smith. And they come back for the penalty. So Joondalup have been under an enormous amount of pressure for such long periods of this match. But somehow, still in this game, as Hardwick punches that just inside the 22. Didn't chew off a whole lot of ground. Maybe they've got some sort of move worked out. Joondalup are scrapping really well, aren't they? They're making some errors defensively, but at the same time, they're working really hard to shut down any of uh, Bayswater's attack. So they try to mix it up. They go down to the front, down the short side. Buist it is. They just managed to bundle him into touch. It was a nice short one into powder. Back to Buist. And a good tackle. And a little knock on at the very end. So Junlup not out of trouble yet, but well, it's a good line out under pressure, but unfortunately for brothers, not straight. Yeah, Interesting just... doing a short short man line out. It made it pretty easy to work out who was going to go to. 
Yeah, but they had the opportunity to win that win, win, win that well there as well. Like you could see Thomas Bradner, I think it was, jumping up. He had the height. He had everything over the opposition. He had he'd beaten them off the ground for speed. You know, Andrew Picotto just had to be a little bit more patient and hit his man at the top of his jump there. But, you know, the little bit of pressure does funny things to all of us, whether we're here. When especially when we're throwing a line out five metres out and the wind's howling over your shoulder. Oh, listen to it. Listen down. to how hard got, it is. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting some flashbacks here. Yeah, now, well, uh, as we see Liam Jones come on the field for June Lap, young Welshman who's just uh, arrived at the club. I'll just take over their tests and wash that away. <laughs> Ian Jones will be loving this kind of weather. Oh, well, he'll, he'll, he'll be feeling at home. Well, I saw weather. him lathering up the sunscreen just before as he was running out. <laughs> so, watch. Are we going to see an eight-man shove here, Heath? Are they going to try and get the pushover try? They start marching towards the line. Powder, it's come down. They pick and go. McDonough, he slots through the gap and dots it down. And they're pretty happy with it too. Nice reward for the halfback. He's had a busy afternoon up here at HBF Arena. He's pretty happy too. And just, just going, looking back here, he, uh, it's almost by default that he ends up with the ball because it just pops out for him off the side of the scrum there. Liam Jones breaks off, expecting to go forward, but leaves a little hole on the inside. And that's probably one of the easiest tries Ryan McDonald's going to be <laughs> able to score off the back of a scrum. And just going back, mentioning, uh, you're talking about Ryan McDonough and the, the, what I spoke about, the positive running lines from the half, both halfbacks, was especially Basie, they're getting go forward. So their ball carriers are getting over the advantage line. So the nine, when he passes it, when we say positive running line, is to actually run almost in front of the ball and intercept where the ball carrier is going to break the line. And then that way, he's there ready to go. What was actually, what I was noticing, that the, he was almost following his pass. And then because the Basie forwards especially were actually getting well over the game line, he was then having to change direction and follow the ball in, which was taking time. So I think uh, a learning opportunity for him there is that he could actually speed up Basie's attack, which makes them even more threatening. So Mead looking to add the extras just outside the 22 on his good side, and he's skewed that one, splayed it across the front of the post, so the I score think, will I think remain. he was aiming at the wrong post. He was aiming at the light pole post. 33 points to 15. Geez, it was a good platform there by the Basie yeah. forward pack. They were strong, they were low and, and wanting to go forward. So Sheldon Tarawa hit the restart. Sun comes out again. The rain has passed, hopefully for the afternoon. Goss just inside his 22. Powder. Again, they've just got so many running options, this Bayswater team. Goss offloads. Allen has it. He's got some pace. Beats the first one. Runs back into traffic. Oh, good counter ruck from Bayswater. Natai is forced to go back. Penalty, though, coming. Favour of Brothers. It was just either Chris Kidd or, or, or Goss. Just, just so much forward momentum. They've just stumbled over the ball and gone off their feet and given away the penalty. It was a fantastic counter ruck. So Tarawa, with his kick, takes play inside the 22. Opportunity here for Brothers to respond to that McDonough try. As we just said, again, on that replay, it was just, yeah, there was just no one in front of them. And brothers lining up here with both Natai and Toyli out in the centres, so they're going to look to be direct. Unfortunately, don't get that quick, clean ball. Bradnell. Tawara. Natai leaves it behind, gets set as well. Kingy. Still going. Very hard to put down. It's been left behind by Picotto. Bounces up into the arms of Rabaro. So the brothers, their own worst enemy at the moment. It just wasn't. It just wasn't time, was it? It was just the, it, the time was the play was just to settle it down, just to take the tackle, look to look to recycle that ball. But they just tried to do too much of it, and it's the classic one that you teach to the kids when they're younger. You're only going to pass the ball if you're giving it to someone in a better position than you are. It happened two or three times there where Junalup, they just offloaded their troubles onto someone else. And I uh, dare say we'll see uh, Josh Spittle uh, will, uh, step into the first receiver's role here as uh, Darcy Grealish goes onto the field, moves on onto the wing. 
And then we'll see uh, Harry Binion move into the centre. So a few a few changes there for one one substitution. They've made a few field position or changes, Bayswater. So we'll see how that pans out. Yeah, Tavish Mead, the catalyst through all those changes. The number 10's had a great game for Bayswater this afternoon as their scrum once again dominant over to this June Lap Pack. Hardwick up at first receiver. Goes very high. Allen underneath it. Flies high. Takes it well. Bounced there by Grealish, the fresh man on. A pick and go powder. He's come way too quickly from that one, so the referee will play advantage. Natai wants to go quickly. Tarawa looking to get back the banana kick from him. It's a nice one. Some more replacements coming. Yeah, Isaac Carvu, Fiji under 20 player going on for Tane Yates getting his. I think it looks like it's Tane Yates who's sneaking off the far side though. No, maybe it's not. It's going to be Duncan McIsaac. Look, Isaac having a rest. This is Carvu's return from injury, I'm led to believe. So it'll be good to see him back on the field. They just need to get these things right. Geez, they've got about three or four line-out moves and it's been almost won by Olo, but in fact it has been. And Olo is almost away. I think they almost got a little bit too confusing there. Heath Tessman, I'm sure you love those tricky line-outs, but really, are they making it hard for themselves? No, it's a, every line-out, it's got to be the kiss, isn't it? Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> just, just win the ball well. And it's good. It's good to have those in your repertoire so that you can really pull them around and move and manipulate line-outs how you want to and get the jumpers where you want them to be. But they've run that same play a few times. You could just see Brett and Ola. He, just, he said he'd seen this show before. <laughs> I'm just going to wait down here at the front, wait for you to get back to me. So that's where they can change it up. They can change it up just by hitting that middle pot or hitting, hitting Ribeiro at the back off that first throw instead of moving him all the way to the front. And a shout-out to Steve Rao. From Perth Bayswater. He's a bit crook today, so he's decided to stay home and watch this game on Stan Sport, which is one of the fantastic options that people in Perth now do have to watch the match of the round in club rugby. So cheer out to you, Steve. You'd be pretty happy with your side this afternoon. This time it's held well by June Lup. Tarawa. Duff. They try to strip him again. Nartai's there, needs a run. He finds one in the form of Kavu. Nartai again. Gets his hands on the ball. Pakoto. Held up. Penalty. Come back for it. Yeah, Powder. Powder could be in a little bit of strife here, depending on how the referee wants to play. That's his second high shot in a row, but no. Nothing to be said, and they just play on quickly. Kavu. Towards the line. Ball is there. Natai has it. Bradner. They fling him back. Tarawa runs into Goss. They hold him up. Now they get him down. Ball's there. They pick and go again through Carvu. Spins. Still going. Centimetres away. The pick and go by Judelup. Natai. He wants it. Picotto. Ball there. They pick and go again through Carvu. Great defence here by Bayswater. And finally, the crack appears. And Junlup get the points. Tuyali'i it was. The number eight. Very similar try to JP Mostert's in that first half. It was almost a carbon copy, wasn't it? Just hidden in there and the ball at his feet. So, Bayswater must be frustrated. Judelup will not go away. They won't, will they? They're just sort of hovering and hovering. And that's the thing. You look at this, you know, 15 or maybe even 16 or 17 minutes left in the game. Judelup, if, if uh, Sheldon Tarawa can put this over, 22, 33, they score again. And then all of a sudden, we have got a game. So Tarawa, again, there's that 22-metre line. Strikes it. And strikes it well. So 33-22, the score. 
here at HBF Arena. And this is where we come back to, uh, as we said again, we come back to our chat at half time. Now, did Perth Bays would have enough points for the p territory and the possession they had in the first half? I don't think that trial will be any, any highlights reels during the week, but <laughs> they all count. Bayswater a little bit slow coming up for this restart. I think we might try and have Akil Attar here on this wing on the commentary side. I think I'm going to try and get him up in the air. So this restart, if it comes across this side, he's offside, but, but he's quick. And he's almost taken it. Powder's got in his way. Picoto leaves it behind. <laughs> he's... He's quick, but he doesn't have to be that quick when he's that far <laughs> offside. <does he>? When <laughs> he's two metres over the line. You yeah. picked it, Mick. You picked it because he went. To, he had to chase a long way inland yeah. to get to it. Yeah, he needed a bit more. Hardwick needed a bit more on the kick. So just having a look at this Bayswater back line at the moment. So I think it is Spittle at 10. And then your Binion at 12, so Goss remains at 13. And Attar on the short side. Very quick. Brothers, though, with the ball. Tarawa, nice little chip kick through. It's clever. Into some space. The bounce is awkward. Jeez, that would have been interesting if it had nice bounced up for June Love. They had a couple of players coming through, so if one of them got it, they had would have had support in in uh, in hand and a couple of surreal speedsters out there too Duff and Allen but just the ball just beating Duff into touch so baseball to line out five meters inside Joodle up territory Newsom Smith wins it well McDonough Goss very similar style to Gary Cotter, former Cottesloe centre from many years ago. Olo, wrapped up by White. Carvey there to help. Had it, wants it. Doesn't get it. Long ball. Still going. Newsom Smith taking a mountain of stopping. This is him now. Adam wants this chip kick across on this commentary side. Gets the penalty. Oh, I think Hardwick <laughs> was almost through there. Yeah, yeah, penalty there for playing the nine after he's passed the ball. Taking their time to decide what they're going to do. Hardwick. Stepping up. And that's a fairly decent nudge too. That's a nice, that's a nice kick. You could hardly blame Liam Jones before though, you know, you get a little opportunity to <laughs> say hello to the nine. Up, say good day to the nine, keep him personal. out of the next phase. You think the referee's looking the other way. Yeah, that's good, thank you. So Walski with that in uh, Wales. No here. jury, no jury would convict you. <laughs> Walski with the throw. They go to powder, back to Wolski, down that short side. Oh, he stuck his hand. I think that's very close. Ooh. Nice bit of variation from Basie. What's the powder? Not happy, so they've gone to the assistant referee. We'll have his call. But if we get to see the re replay on this, no, he said he's uh, he's gone, Must have gone, gone a touch. out. But uh, you see a go-go gadget arm spring out here. So. Spoken about Jundalup running the same line at move twice, but it just about paid off there for Perth Bayswater. So Pakoto needs to get this right. Olo gets himself in the way. Pakoto cleans up the mess, though. Does well. So Jundalup goes back to Tarawa. And that banana kick does it well. That's a cracker. Puts it over the head of Darcy Grealish. And a couple of changes. Coming for the Joondalup brothers. Ryan McGloin, he's obviously finished his exams. Yep. He's coming on. 
And we talk about subs, like that's a handy sub to oh, bring on yeah, with 10 to go. Absolutely. And you would expect him to make an impact. And with Kingy on, uh, on, on his inside, yeah, that's, a, that's good, a definitely a, uh, a worthwhile midfield. Good combination. They just need to get some ball. It's been all Bayswater. Daniel James, the other substitution there. So he's on the field as well. So these benches have been unloaded. Oh, it's so stolen. Oh, Villy comes through. Newsom Smith continues to come through. This front foot defence from Perth Bayswater. Brothers need to just settle things down, get themselves a platform. Tui Ali'i, he straightens. Billy makes the tackle right around the bootlaces. He had a big game the front row this afternoon. McGloin. Tui Ali'i again. Tarawa, long ball out. So Judlup trying to make some yardage here. They're caught in their half, finding it really hard to get out. Kavu. That's the halfway line. You can see Tarawa. Natai gets those legs driving. They're around that ball again. Pierce it was. Tarawa, Allen, now offloading. Pierce into touch. Kingy leaving that ball behind, and Pierce it was just whacked by Kalolo. Yeah, but good little draw and pass there by uh, by Allen. Did the right thing. Didn't overplay his hand. So Oakley Pierce, the brother of. Marley Pierce, who's had a breakthrough year this year playing for the Western Force. Back up playing with Joondalup. Not that he's going to get too much game time. He's off to the Under-20 World Championships as well. He's just about your favourite player, isn't he, Mick? Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's very good. I do like him. He'd be relishing his opportunities, you know, like you're a young bloke and you get a chance. He's, he's certainly not uh, missing out on those opportunities. And he will learn so much, won't he, Tess? Yeah, abs absolutely. And the experiences he'll grow on this year will be will be great for Simon Crod and that that forward pack and that team that he's building here for the Western Force as well. Like having young guys like that, being able to step up as well, coming from you know, relatively untested from a relatively untested place, just playing club rugby last year, to be able to step up and go really well on that top stage. And as you said, then, Mick, we're just watching Journal up and, and they, they just struggled to get that go forward until it was Natai who bent the Bayesley line and gave them the opportunity to play front football. Yeah, and once they do, they look, they look good, but they just need to get that front football. So Wolski with the line-out throw, they go to Olo again. He is so safe, such a safe option. But... Did you just put the mock on in there? <laughs> Not an Olo. Olo. I think Olo was OK. I'm just not sure the ball oh, it came loose. Carvu somehow got his mid in there. And Kololo, I think it was, it couldn't hang on to it. So a little knock on. So Junlap brothers trailing by 11. We've got about seven minutes remaining in this match. They've spent 20 minutes of it playing a man down. They've had two players in the sin bin. So they don't really deserve to be this close to a... A side that put 50-something on Netherlands last week. So, Basie, I think they'll go away from this a little bit disappointed with their performance. They'll be happy if they can hang on for the win. So, Nartai with the feed. Big scrum coming. It's been picked up off the back by Tui Lee. Tries to brush off Annan but can't. They swing him to the ground. Five in from touch. Nartai again. Bradner. Takes the tackle. Natai. Kavu offloading to Tarawa. Long ball across to McGloin. Now to Allen. This is Duff. Oh, Allen's been upended. The chip through. He's chasing Kingy. Kingy. <coughs> oh, has he got there? Has he got there? We'll try and pick it up, but... If that's a try, it's, you know, it's an outstanding try. So McGloin just holding up the defence. Allen, in fact, it wasn't Duff. It was Ben Weir. In fact, no, it was Daniel James. Daniel James it was. And 
And uh, I just hope that lady who was holding that baby uh, who got cleaned <laughs> I hope she's up, okay. I hope the baby, yeah, I hope they're all right. I hope she made a call it, it and looks told like the assistant referee whether it was in or not. Had prime position there. I hope they're all right. Ringside seats. The assistant referee as well, right on the spot. He could not have been in a better position to make the call there. So Jundalup still hot on the attack. The oh, opportunity yeah. to get the ball back now. And Kingy. Just explosive. That's a big kick from Hardwick. Tarawa sends it back to Allen. Jundalup. I need a chance there. Uh, time is running out on the clock. Powder gets hold of him. Ragdolls him to the ground. They need to get this ball back. They do. Pakoto. The brothers, Natai. 10 metre line now. To Eli'i. Offloading Yates. Jundal up with a spring in their step. He's not rolling away. Atai making no effort. Natai wants to play on quickly. My pet hate. Halfbacks who don't realise where the mark is on a penalty, they run to the referee. The referee could be 20 metres away from the mark, yet they think they should take it at the referee. And Akil Atta there making no effort to roll away from that one. Jindal up are coming. They are. There's five and a half minutes left on the game clock that Heath Tessman and Dwayne Nestor were standing in front of during the second grade game or asked to move. Brad Nutt, they leave him alone, Jindal up. Now they start to rumble. Jindal up. Need to score to have any chance in this game. Ball turned back inside. Lovely ball. Back to Pierce. Here they go again. Pakoda. Kingy. They're straight on that ball again. Bayswater do it so well. Penalty. Natai plays on quickly. The line opens up and he scores the try. He's been threatening to do the quick restart ever since he's come on, and this time it pays off for the young halfback. And we'll see it here on the replay. The penalty comes, and Natai just straight away. Right on the mark. Newsom Smith right couldn't do anything. Powder misses the tackle. And Tuntel up. Wow. Do not go anywhere these final four minutes of this match. It's been a, a courageous performance by the home side. As Sheldon Tarawa. Needing to add the extras. And he does that. So it is game on. 33 points to 29. The brothers will need a try to win this match. And it's what we predicted that if they if they did manage to score and they got within range of that last uh, you know last scoring opportunity, that we really have got a game. So this has uh, this has definitely hotted up this game. Hotted up. I'm not sure that's a phrase. Mick? Absolutely, perfect English. Spacey <laughs> taking their time, <laughs> chewing up this clock. 3:26 on the game clock. They go deep. Sheldon Tarawa. He's been good for Jindal up. Unleashes. Uses that wind and sends that ball deep inside Bayswater territory. Here they go. Oh, they're given, they gave Sheldon an absolute mountain of time there to, to sum up where he was going to put it, how hard he was going to kick it, what angle. He was figuring out vectors of the wind and everything there. <laughs> And hasn't he booted that well? Now the pressure onto Wolski. Must win this line out here. They go to... Oh, it's been left behind. Oh, picked up. Luckily there by Chris Kidd. Cleans it up well. Powder. It's the 10-metre line. Bayswater territory. McDonough's there. Gets his hands on it. It's been dropped by Billy. And call referee says call in front of the vocal Judal up crowd. It's a big call by the referee. Powder. Oh, is that the let off? 
Was that the game? McDonough. Bayswater. Wolski. Does well. Newsom Smith steps. This defensive. Judal up, brothers, driving Bayswater back. They've got a spring in their step. They know they're a chance in this match. They're right up. Almost too quickly. Spittle takes the tackle on the 10. They go the clubhouse side. Two and a half to go, says the referee, Powder. Jim Lutt need to get this ball back, kid. Bayswater need to play error-free football. Vili. This time he hangs onto it. They try to roll him around. It may have been stolen, but the penalty will come. That's impacted the play. 18, yes. Oh, Dylan Natai it was. Too tempting. The ball just sitting there. It's like Heath Tesman spotting a little bit of duck in his corporate hospitality suite. It's just you can't <laughs> leave it alone. You've got to get onto it before Mick Collis gets his... <laughs> He's snout in the trough. I do. I wouldn't know, guys. What's a, what's a corporate <laughs> hospitality thing? So, Perth Bayswater, I think that little decision to call that ball a, a knockback, it's probably the right one. But that might have just got Perth Bayswater home. Juneau up with a lot of work to do now inside their own half, well inside it. As Powder wins that line out on the 22 metre line. Just over a minute remaining. They start to march now. Can they put the exclamation mark on this game? They might try and walk this in from 25 metres away. This will be on the highlights reel. They're heading towards the Joondal up line. I think they're going to get there. They still march. They're still going. Bayswater, they must be over the line. And they are. That is impressive. Wow. <laughs> that is just... Beautiful to see, and it's that pack. They bring it down, they set up. Look, they take their time as well. And it's Kalola there. He's done such a good job of just getting forward, getting that weight going forward, and everyone being able to follow him. And then it's the height as well. Look at the height of those Jundalar brothers, boys. They're all looking for that ball. They're searching while there's no heads popping up for this Bayswater pack. They're all low, and they're driving. They're staying tight. They know that they can win this game here with this mall, and they do. They seal it. And I think it was Ungawalski the man who came away with the points to seal this game for Perth Bayswater. And uh, great reward for what has been a dominant pack this afternoon and for the whole pack to score that try to put this game beyond the reach of Joondala was a great result. Geez, you've got to say, though, Joondalup, you, you know, they stay in games. Oh, Having yeah. a look at their season and, and the games they've lost, they've only lost a lot of them through a few points. So they're fighters. They're definite fighters, and they'll stay in a match. So you can't let them do that. To add the extras, doesn't get much on it, and that is full-time here at HBF Arena. And in the end, it was Perth Bayswater hanging on in what was an entertaining match to win by 38 points to 29 over the Joondalup brothers. And as we mentioned, Joondalup really courageous effort from them. They didn't really deserve to be in that match, in that match for as long as they were. They were in it right up to the very end. Well, they'd, wor they'd worked really hard in the first half to stay in contact and then, and then to be able to come back and actually put Basie under that much pressure with five minutes to go. Uh, you know, a commendable effort, but uh, Basie able to manage the game in the end, and uh, yeah, what a way to finish it, Mick, with uh, a very, very impressive uh, driving mall. Yeah, from 25 metres out, that'll be on the highlights reel around the country, because that was a that was an absolute beauty by the Bayswater pack, and a, a great win for Perth Bayswater up here at HBF Arena in Joondalup. And there were plenty of great performers in this Perth Bay water side this afternoon. And Heath Tessman is down there with one of them.
Thank you very much, Mick. And I'm down here with the Perth Bayswater captain, Nuku Powder. And Nuka, great way for, to finish for that forward pack. Great mall, driven all the way out from 22 out. Yeah, uh, fresh things for us. I uh, thank um, all praise and glory to the man, Miss Heiss. But yeah, um, all credit to the boys, eh, just for digging deep. Uh, although they were on our back foot a lot of time, uh, the boys kept uh, managed to keep composed. And uh, yeah, it just shows um, what we just done there. Um, the boys just didn't give up. So yeah. Yeah, and you talk about your players never giving up. It was the same for Jundalup as well. They just wouldn't go away. Like, you guys kept in control. A lot of ball in that first half weren't quite able to score as many tries as you probably wanted to. And it was just came down to those last few minutes where Jundalup just staying in close and tight. Yeah, I'm full credit to Sheldon and his, um, his group. Um, just uh, for, Especially for this year, um, we can't sleep on any teams. And uh, it goes to show um, Jundalup just from what they came from last year is a big step up and for them to not drop their heads um even though the first half uh, the scoreboard was a bit was a bit uh we had a big step in front uh just goes to show what can happen when you don't drop your head so full credit to Sheldon and his boys and plenty of good things happening down at Perth Bayswater as well that'll launch you guys up into the top four so best of luck with the rest of the season yeah cheers um can I say one thing uh just rest in peace with my auntie in Tonga uh I'll and uh, thank you thank you brother fantastic that's uh, Heath Tetron there with Nuku Powder and uh, Dwayne. He's a, look, he's, a, he's a great fellow and a fantastic player. And they'll miss him when he does go to France, but great opportunity for him. Absolutely, Mick. You know, like, you, you, you don't ever begrudge a player being able to get a great opportunity. But you, you, you're definitely right. When you've got a guy off the back of your scrum in, in the forward pack that goes forward like he does, and, and that just creates opportunities for other guys like Olo and, and you know, even, even blokes who, who are probably very good rugby players in, in Joseph Annan, who, you know, they, they sort of fade in the background, but they're still good rugby players. So their pack is such a good pack and it's so strong and they go forward really well led by, uh, by Nuku. Yeah, and you mentioned some some great players there for Bayesley. And also for Junior Lup, as, as uh, uh, Nuku mentioned, Sheldon Tarawa just really was great this afternoon. And, and Wenunga Kingi, just when he turns on, he is just fantastic. So it was great to see him running around this afternoon. But that just about wraps things up here at HBF Arena with Perth Bayswater defeating Joondal up by 38 points to 29. Again, a huge thanks to Fortescue and all our partners for making this broadcast possible. My name is Mick Collis on behalf of Dwayne Nestor, Heath Tessman and all the crew. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to your company next week when the Fortescue Premier Gay competition continues out at Kingsway Sports Complex with Wanneroo taking on UWA right here on Stan Sport.